Hey, before we get started with today's episode, I want to let you know that if you're planning for retirement or aren't sure where to start, we have a helpful checklist for you. We put together a guide called Your Pre-Retirement Checklist and have made it available for free on our website. This detailed checklist covers things pertaining to cash flow, social security, Medicare, asset allocation, and living a purposeful retirement. The link to download the checklist is listed in the episode description, or you can go to wiserinvestor.com, scroll to the bottom, enter your email address, and then you'll have access to your pre-retirement checklist. Thanks for listening. Welcome to the Wiser Retirement Podcast, where we believe the best financial advice should always be conflict-free. I'm your host, Casey Smith, and with me are my co-host, Matthews Barnett and Brad Lyons. Hey, guys. Hi, Casey. How's it going? Um, so today we're going to talk about staying active in retirement. It's part of our uh, theme for uh, uh, for this quarter. But really, bef- before we jump in there, um, you know, focusing on these things in retirement right now are probably really important. Uh, you know, as we record this, uh, the market is officially in a, a bear market territory. Entered a bear market yesterday with the Dow, or excuse me, the S and P five hundred. Uh, officially down 21% from its highs. So we've entered bear territory. Uh, we're looking at a, you know, a, a inter- rising interest rate environment. Uh, tomorrow, we'll see what the Fed, the Fed's meeting today, and they'll announce interest rate you know, changes tomorrow. So we'll see what the effect of that is. Interest uh, investors have been very concerned about uh, inflation that came in higher than expected in May. It was at 8.6% year over year. Well, I think 1% month over month, something like that. Energy prices are rising. Interest rates are rising. Uh, costs of goods and services are rising. As we've mentioned, these are just concerns that investors are having. Trying to reprice the securities relative to a high inflation environment and a higher invest or interest rate environment. And that's a little unsure to investors right now as they're trying to project out those future cash flows and the net present value in today's world. So... We'll see how this is plays out a little bit. There's been some positive things going on, though, still. The um, corporate profits are still doing very well. Um, first quarter profits, as we, we know by now, 80% of the companies that reported uh, reported hi- higher than expected revenues. Uh, so far, uh, this upcoming quarter, profits are expected to come in at 10% higher than, than last year. So profits are still doing quite well at companies. Um, uh, jobs are still, you know, available. Uh, I think we were talking and mentioned that the ratio of jobs available to workers seeking jobs is 1.9 to one right now, which means that there's somewhere in the neighborhood of 11 to 12 million jobs available and 6 million or so people currently looking for jobs. So jobs are plentiful, uh, and that's positive. Um, there seems to be a bit of a shift going on in consumer spending, and that has in investors worried as they're looking to re reallocate their portfolios to meet that demand. It seems that we can look back now and we can see that during the, the, the period of COVID, uh, people were buying goods in order to satisfy the, what their needs in, in life. Now that's kind of phased out as the economy has reopened and people are able to travel and move about. And now people are shifting their expenditures towards services, which means they're traveling, they're buying um, vacations, they're wanting experiences. Having been cooped up in their homes for quite some time, um, people want to get out. They want to spend the dollars that they have. As we know, the Fed pumped in, you know what, close to $10 trillion into the economy. Um, and now they're trying to figure out a way to pull this money back a bit in order to get a better holding footing on on pricing, on inflation. So it's going to take some time. The Fed is is doing what they can. You know, we, we can't predict what the Fed is going to do, whether they rise raise interest rates a little, small amount over a longer period of time or take this in bigger chunks and raise interest rates faster in order to you know, slow down the inflationary effects on the economy. So so a lot of things coming down the pike here. So a correction is 10% and then a, re, um, a bear market is 20%. 20%. Mm-hmm. Uh, historically, after you enter a bear market, what happens? Well, the, the market, of course, is a futures discount place. So 
the market's trying to predict what's going to happen. And investors in the market are saying that there's a possibility of a recession. So if we hit recession, which we'll know by September, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, well, the official definition of a, success, of a recession is two quarters in a row of negative GDP. So in the first quarter, we had a negative 1.4% GDP print. And so that's why you say like by September or sometime between June 30th and later on in the summer, we'll know what the, uh, the print is for the re- uh, GDP numbers in the second quarter of this year. Yeah, it, it, it'll be the, the weirdest recession ever because you have record unemployment. That's right. At the same time that you have a contracting economy, and usually it comes to record, uh, you know, unemployment the other Unemploy- way. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Which is you know part of the definition of a, of a recession is, you know, people, you know. People don't have jobs. People yeah. don't have Harder jobs. Time. And so yeah. they're not spending, so the economy shrinks. So, I, <laughs> But that's not what's happening I, here. I had someone call in um, recently, I happened to pick up the phone, and they, they were looking for um, hourly financial planning. And I asked her how much she made, and she said, well, which job? And I said, well, both, you know, what's your total income? She said, well, I make 85 in one job and 90 in another job. And I said, um, okay, so you work two part-time jobs. And she says, oh, no, I have two full-time jobs. I work at home. <laughs> I, was, I just paused for a second. I was like, well, that's true. There's about two jobs available for every, <laughs> for every person right now who's looking for a job. So this lady took both. <laughs> 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 you just and, and then I'm, I had so many questions which I, I didn't ask, funny. but I, but I was like, how like do these employers know about this? As as an employer myself, I would not be very happy. <laughs> but I guess if the job's getting done, she's in IT, and, right? You know, she could work twenty four seven. That's right, uh, and she, weekends and weekends, yeah. so, remote work. So I guess get her eighty hours in, <laughs> right? Uh. But uh, but no, she Good for her. She, she was uh, she was getting out of debt, and she was um, ready to ready to start saving and. So yeah, it was a it was an interesting conversation, um, you know. But but shifting back to our focus, you know, staying active in retirement, you know, there's there's a lot of nasty stuff going on. Um, just listening to CNBC on the drive in on on XM Radio, um, I, I I just changed the channel. I mean, it, 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 these people don't don't have a crystal ball. They they are smart people, but they don't know the future. And and so much of it is what they're talking about is now. And we're not investing for today. We're not investing for next week. We're investing for a lifetime, right? And, you know, for our clients, there's safeguards in place. There's cash reserves. Um, two years worth typically is what we try to try to maintain. Um, and so with, with these reserves, there's a buffer for events like this. So, yeah, it, it, it's really nasty to sit there and look at your balance every single morning and go, I keep losing money. I keep losing money. Um, but you shouldn't hyper focus on it that much because when you're invested in very broad index funds, you're going to get the broad return. And so seven out of you know 10 years, historically, there are pretty good years in the stock market. Occasionally we have three years in there that don't go the, our direction. And so this is, this is that time period. It's also frustrating, I think, because people mix their politics in to, with their portfolio and they think that that the person they voted for or didn't vote for has a direct impact on their portfolio. And that's not really necessarily the case historically. I mean, I would argue now uh, with inflation that that's probably less that way (laughs) because it's very frustrating to see gas prices knowing that we could fix it tomorrow. We we could fix the gas problem tomorrow. We don't have to, we don't have to buy a drop of oil. We could be exporters of oil again, actually in profit from this as a country. Uh, And that makes a lot of people angry. And so we choose instead to hurt, hurt you don't hurt us no one at this table is hurt by this or, or probably most of our listeners people are hurt by the people that that more than likely statistically vote for the people that <laughs> that are in the office now right so so he you know literally i drive up to a gas station i said it earlier go drive up to a gas station somebody put five dollars on their car because you know you, you you have what's left from the last transaction mm-hmm. it, was, it was just over a gallon i'm like man that this is who we're hurting by not using our natural resources, we're hurting the, the, the least of the population, people who can only put $5 in their car. Uh, so that to me, that's very frustrating. But typically, politics doesn't have a whole lot to do with the stock market, partially because 
We're a free enterprise country. We always have been. I hope that we always will be. Companies are going to make money no matter what the environment is, right? You right. Know? Yeah. So, so it's well, it's, inflation is really a regressive tax on on people who make less money, right? Oh, That's absolutely. What you're referring to yeah, it's a regressive tax. Yeah, it, I just look at it as it, it's it was it's all preventable. Now we still have the supply chain issue, which is which is something that I think that you know could be probably addressed better, but. Regardless, Republican Democrat, I, you're going to still have that problem. That's not a, that's not a White House problem. That that's a started with COVID, and you still have literally, you still have. Well, it's a major free countries. enterprise problem. You're right. It's a free. <laughs> you still enterprise have major problem. countries are shutting down because of COVID. Right. Well, we're not. Yeah. So so that that's going to create a supply chain issue right there. Um, but the bottom line is, you got to change the channel. You you got to pick up some golf clubs. You got to whatever your hobby is. You need to go out and do that. Because if you have a plan in place, if you have a retirement plan in place, then what you need to focus on is, you know, at, my mom's had to go through the healthcare system recently. And one of the things on our list here is be health, you know, be active in your health. And I kept thinking, she got terrible health care. I'm on a board of a hospital. Was, not anymore. <laughs> I was like, how, how, how did this happen, right? And, um, you know, I look back on it, and now the more I think about it, is like there is no VIP healthcare. There is no, um, hey, I'm so and so. Yeah, we're going to take you first. Um, well, there is some of that, but the care, the care still sucked. So in the end, um, the best way to be a VIP in healthcare is not to have to use it. So it's being healthy, it's eating healthy, it's exercising, it's doing all those things. Those are things you can focus on in retirement, not sitting there looking at your portfolio every single every single day, right? Which is harder to do now, the availability. So it's not like it used to be where you could not not access it. It's everywhere you go with the TV and phone, but that's the more reason to just get out and not be around it and not, and not hyper-focus on uh, what's going on in the markets. That's right. We are in a 24-hour news cycle. Oh, in the news sells fear, yeah. right? I mean, it's a good time said, for him. You know, there's a lot of commercial time there that needs to be filled up. Yeah, <laughs> right. You know, I, I actually, you, you talk about commercial time, you know, it's like times like this is when all the gold people come out and say, buy gold, buy gold. But when you have rising interest rates, right, your dollars will be strengthening. So that's typically very poor for gold. Um, and, you know, basically year to date, gold hasn't done horrible. Um, it's, it's up, it's basically flat 0.37%, which is pretty good compared to what the stock market is doing, I guess. Mm -hmm. But still in the last three months, it's down 8% um, over the last year, down down almost 3.5%. So, you know, there, there's no, in times like this, it's tough because there's, you know, I was looking at my phone yesterday and I'm like, man, these are all of our holdings. They're all in the red, even the most conservative bond funds in the red because the entire world is moving to cash, which is the last place you want to be. <laughs> In a high inflation period, so you, you have to remember too that you're you're getting um, you're getting your dividends, right? You're getting income off the portfolio, right? And and I remember as an advisor from the flat decade two thousand to twenty ten. There's a lot of stuff that happened on the calendar between those time periods. Um, when you look back at rate of returns, it was income. The portfolio income is was the rate of return, right? So, right. which means those people were getting paid to wait. Yeah, yeah. As absolutely. an investor, you're getting paid to wait when you're receiving those dividends. You're waiting for price increases to occur, and in the meantime, you're receiving dividend checks in the mail yeah. or in your account. And also, as humans, though, we think that the way things are today are the way things are always going to be. And I feel like I keep saying this story over and over again. Um, I don't know if I do it on the podcast or not, but you know, it's when you're going through something, it feels like you're going to be in that situation forever. But that's not necessarily the case. It's just a season. The markets aren't going to continue to drop at these percentages forever. We've had eight horrible weeks followed by a great week, followed by a flat week, followed by another appears to be a <laughs> horrible week. But it, I mean, it, I remember during the financial crisis, it was Dow zero. Oh, this is what's going to take to get the Dow zero. Cause we got down to what? 6,300, 6,800, something like that. And then on the way up, people are like Dow 50,000, Dow 50, <laughs> right? And that's not reality either. No. No, it's not. You know, these, these shocks occur to, you know, an economy from time to time. I wouldn't even necessarily call this a shock, though. I mean, interest rates rise and fall over time, and these we know that these things happen. Yeah. A shock is more like the great financial crisis of 2008. True. A shock is more like 
COVID. Yeah, I think a global I think the, pandemic. I mean, I think the shock is down. during a, a modern day pandemic. The market ends up being up, you know, huge percentages. You know, for a year and a half. That, yeah. To me, that's probably the shock when you look back at it. It's like, why did it do that? Yeah. Well, a lot of with the influx of capital, we knew this was going to happen at some point. Just most people said it would be transitory, which it's not appearing to be transitory, which no. could be the the longer term issue if inflation stayed like this for a while or they have to hike rates uh, to keep up with it. So staying active in retirement, that's our, uh, that's supposed to be our focus today. So yeah. let's, let's talk about some of this stuff. What are some things that could take our minds off of what's happening um, to portfolios and, and everything else uh, financial these days? Um, so obviously engaging your mind. So, um, you know, you don't want to be bored in retirement. Uh, we, we always, you know, the cliches of older people doing the crossword puzzles or, or reading it, uh, obviously reading a book, everyone should be doing that. Uh, even if you're not retired, listening to a podcast, I might That's be, what uh, I was going to say, <laughs> what a great idea. Listen to podcasts. Start, start listening to different podcasts, uh, not related maybe to, uh, the, the, the markets, <laughs> unless it's positive. Yeah. <laughs> We're trying to stay positive. Um, you know, I, I think I think the best way to engage your mind uh, is, is probably, um, I think, continually learning, right? And and you should never stop learning. And and I see that with a lot of people. Um, you know, oh yeah, we don't use computers, or oh we don't we don't know how to work this phone. And you know, I I get it that it's probably foreign to them, and and how it, it all happens is like magic, right? Yeah. But you still should go learn it. You know. Just go figure it out. You know, we, we we should follow our interests, right, and learn more about them and so we can enhance the things that we, we enjoy. So that's part of the learning as well is learning more about the things that you enjoy. That's true. What about golf? Okay, let's take an example like that. Take a lesson. Yeah. Okay? Push yourself a little outside your comfort zone in order to see what your capabilities are. Okay. Learning can be both intellectual, can be physical, you know, it's, learning can be social right? as well. So there's lots of ways to look at learning and utilize that as a, I want to learn something. Let's go try it. You know? Yeah. I already have one thing in the back of my mind for retirement. If I ever retire, yeah. I can't imagine <laughs> I'd ever retire, yeah. but I, I see these people and they're like grill masters and they're like grilling all this stuff. Oh, that's great. I don't know how to do any of that. Yeah. I am not. Yeah, you, at my house, you'd see my wife grilling, not me. <laughs> for, for now. For now, for yeah. Now. But no, I, I know a guy who uh, kind of semi-retired, and he took a class, and I played golf with him one day, and he's, like, super tired, and I'm like, hey, what have you been doing? You're, like, zonked out today. And he's he's like, oh, I, I, I don't know, he's cooking something. and had to cook all night or something. Yeah. I don't know. He said there was, like, stray dogs at the fence. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, that sounds really cool. It's like a project, right? And, and yeah. he made too much, you know, feeding the whole neighborhood. You yeah. know, I like, I like active acts of service. That's great. Right? That's awesome. Um, maybe someday, partially as I'm colorblind, you know, green, brown, blue, purple. So with that, um, grilling gets a little harder. I have to go after thermometer. But exactly. They have, yeah, they have these things that you can just plug in and it tells you the temperature. So yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe grilling's someday. gone high tech. It has. <laughs> it used to be charcoal. <laughs> you don't need the skill then. Then you just yeah. plug it in and, <laughs> and some time. <laughs> well, and then part of the problem is I don't really appreciate a good meal because I'm always like in my mind I have all these work things I need to be focused on, right? Yeah. So I'm always hurrying through lunch, <laughs> not trying to enjoy my lunch. <laughs> Cook everything on high. Uh, yeah, I would, I, <laughs> get it over with. I wouldn't even have to eat. Yeah, if, you know, in a perfect world, I just I just yeah. wouldn't even eat. Yeah. <laughs> so my mindset will have to change a little bit, but. No, I, th I think, um, you know, it, yeah, you mentioned golf. Um, you know, I, I think there's other things. I What's kind of struck me recently is uh, this pickleball is like rage. Everyone's it's doing this pickleball. Huge. Very big. Oh, my goodness. I was it's talking huge. to an orthopedic surgeon. He said that was keeping him in business. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot he of injuries. Five-year-olds playing pickleball. <laughs> yeah. So, again, that's something new. Okay. Yeah, they learned is. a new game. Right. Okay. So, it's right. um, great. But, yeah, I, I – you know, and then I think being just being a regular reader, uh, I don't like reading. Uh, I, I like reading business books mostly now, but I'm think as I would age, things would shift a bit, maybe. But that it's a great way to kind of get lost in uh, something other than 
you know, a TV, uh, TV programming is horrible today. I yeah. feel like, but, um, active in your health, man. I mean, you've got, um, there's a service it's called M- MD VIP. If you're in the Atlanta area, uh, you can find several doctors that are part of that program. It's about, I want to say it's like 400 and maybe $475 a quarter, somewhere in there. But basically it's a uh, really thorough physical. I mean, they sit down and spend hours with you, uh, all sections of your, of your health and, and help give you goals and things to work toward. Um, and so there, there's services like that, that will not just come and do physical. And you, you talk to the doctor for, for, you know, five minutes, they'll spend two hours with you. Um, the doctor will. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's, that's a great way to establish a baseline of your health and what you need to be working on. Uh, but obviously just building a routine, uh, which I'm really good at building a temporary routine. I can go a couple of weeks being really good with my workouts and then I drop off because, you know, I have a podcast to do at eight o'clock in the morning. So <laughs> <laughs> let's go let's skip the workout today. Um, you know, uh, being an active storyteller, this is something that made our list today that I wouldn't have thought about. Um, uh, Michaela here in our office uh, helped put together our notes. So shout out to Michaela for this one. Uh, the greatest she wrote here: greatest gift is is to have um, the greatest gift you have is your experience. Be an active storyteller to your family as a mentor or, or your overall community, which I think is great. I mean, we have a lot of um, airline pilots here that have a lot of uh, knowledge, a lot a lot of things that young people should learn so they don't hurt themselves or their passengers and. I can, I can relate to that going, man, you know, you guys need to be listening to these old gray guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's also part of our legacy. When we tell stories about our lives to our children, to our grandchildren at that point in time, you know, we're leaving a legacy. We're leaving a legacy of how we lived and what we saw and what we did and whose lives we touched. Uh, it could be career, could be life, could be, experiences that you know that we've all had yeah but you know it's just a way for one generation to pass down a story and a legacy from generation to generation who may have an interest in this just didn't know that grandfather grandmother used to do this and that's why they have an interest in it for example we have a whole series uh getting teed up now for this for next quarter and i'm really excited about it It's, it's it's building it's called building a financial legacy, but there's so much more to it than just right. finance. And uh, we're, we're starting to put that together now. And, and I'm really excited to talk about that um, next quarter. So we can't give it all away, Brad. <laughs> no, we won't. But uh, <laughs> that was a teaser. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, another, another thing to pick up uh, music in retirement. I never thought about that. Um, I appreciate music, but that's not my gift. And, uh, but yeah, I can see uh, picking up guitar lessons or piano lessons. Um, well, you know, it can, it can be kind of thought of as that, you know, we, we, we go through life in a, in a series of events that lead us off into areas that we may, may not have expected. And we wanted to try something in our lives, but life, work, family, we got so busy, we never got a chance to do it. Here in retirement, we get a chance to go back in time and try some of the things that we wanted to do when we were younger. Some of them may, we may be successful at, some we may completely fail at, but that's okay. They're all new experiences. They're new learning, you know, thing. we may, might meet new friends doing it. Yeah. Okay. But you know, we're, we're, you know, work takes up a lot of our time. Family takes up the rest of it. Now it's an opportunity for a retiree in that station in life to try all the, some of the things that they've always wanted to do. Yeah. So. And then we, we, I mean, we, I think it's a given because it's so cliche, but travel, mm-hmm. right? But you want to do that early in retirement, I feel like, versus later in retirement. Um, but yeah, there's there's uh, there's a lot of cool things to do out west. Car car trips, stop and see stuff, see landscape you haven't seen before. Mm-hmm. Pine trees aren't everywhere, you know. <laughs> Landscapes different <laughs> different places. Um, so you know, there, there's um, um. You just have to be ready. You have to, you have to have a retirement activity plan. You know, we always joke. So we give you a week or two weeks on the couch, but after that, you gotta you gotta find something to do. Yeah. Um, but that that's um, uh, I, I think that's important. Is in part of your retirement planning is like, what is your action plan? What what is going to be your purpose? What's your new purpose each morning? Right. 
Uh, and we, we, there's whole generations out there that need mentoring. So being plugged into something that you love to do, uh, I think is great. You know, um, you know, you have like, there's, there's even stuff that you don't even think about. There's like RC airplanes, uh, there's bicycling, there's, um, you know, all kinds of hobbies. There, there's a, uh, a club up in, um, Highlands, North Carolina on Mondays, they have the yacht club. That sounds really important. And there is a nearby lake and it's like, Oh, there's a yacht club. That's pretty, that's pretty fancy. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's actually just RC boats. And so the golf course is closed on Mondays. So, and they so go, all the old guys get out there with the RC boats. <laughs> they're driving around there. What a they're, uh, they're having races. And yeah. A group event that's active. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was like, oh, that's so cool. And in fact, it even spurred like a whole hobby shop down in Franklin. Yeah. So they drive down to Franklin and, and there's a RC shop that has all these uh, gas and electric powered RC boats. <laughs> so you just don't know, right? No, you really you don't. don't. You have know. to have an open mind going into it. Absolutely. Okay, and see where it takes you. Or, and, and, and in one event... It contains multiple versions of what we just talked about. You're social. You have a small community of other yachtsmen. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you have an interest. You learned about it. You may have had to put it together. So you had to read the instructions and, right. manual, and do it all. And then you go out and you experience it. And then there's also, you know, you think about moving. Um, people make fun of these places, but actually they serve a purpose. You know, like the villages down in Florida, uh, you got Sun City, uh, and I think that's in... Arizona. I know there's one down near Hilton Head. Um, several, it might be one in south of town here in Atlanta. But uh, if you look at their calendar, their activities, you drive through Sun City, right? Uh, I was down there a few weeks ago or last week. Um, I kid you not, I'm turning the corner and I look over and there's a softball game going on. These people out there look like they're in their late 70s, mid 80s, <laughs> and they were women. <laughs> playing softball and they have a softball league. And I drive by a couple days later, they're out there again and they have these huge bleachers and all these people are there watching the softball game. And I'm like, they have a whole softball league here. That's crazy. And then I see the program of all the activities. Every hour can be booked from crocheting to golf, to tennis, softball, you know, it's crazy. So being a part of community, I think is very important mm -hmm. that you find activities and social things to, to do. And that's very healthy. Go live your best life, right? Absolutely. So I think that that's what I put at the tail end of um, our client newsletter update about some portfolio changes we were making um, due to just recent events. And that's one of the things I put down at the bottom is if you're saving for retirement, this is a great opportunity to buy more shares per dollar. That's how you have to look at it. Um, and it's healthy because you're buying all these lower cost shares. And when it rebounds, Right. That's where your big returns come from. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're I know if you're with us, you have a financial plan. If you don't have a financial advisor uh, who have, hasn't done a plan, hasn't put in some safety nets for situations like this, then, then there could be an issue. But for, for us, for our clients, I don't feel like there is. They just need to continue to live their best lives. Go live your best life. Go go do the things you want to do, because in our plan, we've assumed something like this would happen. And it won't happen forever. It will get better, right? That's right. That's right. It will get better. We know this because we've seen enough of these over the years. Yeah. You know, bear markets on average happen once every three or four years. And if you're pre-retirement, then let's say, you know, you're inside 10 years of getting ready to retire. Um, this is another example of why you want to be debt-free. Get the home paid for, get the cars paid for, no credit card debt, no personal loans, no window loans, no HVAC loans, right? You eliminate all that so you don't have a monthly payment. So when it feels like the world's falling apart, um, you're only responsible for utilities in the end, right? And, right. and that, that brings a sense of peace um, to, your, to your life that you don't really understand until you're in situations like, like this right now. Yeah, that's a whole other story is how we've become so accustomed to debt payments that we can't imagine not having them. But here we try and advocate for our clients to get debt free yeah. and experience that peace it's, of mind um, that you talk about. Episode uh, 107 on our podcast. Look, you can look that one up. Uh, it covers uh, getting rid of debt um, prior, prior to retirement. And then um, episode 112 here recently, we did one on, how retirement can affect mental and physical health. And so that might be a good one to the cross-reference for, um, uh, for this. 
But, um, but yeah, it's going to be okay. Everything's going to be fine. Mm-hmm. So just keep trucking along and we got to get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> For our clients. For our clients. All right, guys, good conversation. Talk to you later. Thanks for listening to a Wiser Retirement Podcast. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. Make sure to subscribe wherever you're listening. That way you don't miss any new episodes. We would also appreciate if you could leave a rating and review. If you have any questions about anything that was discussed today, head to wiserinvestor.com and reach out. We would love to hear from you. This episode was produced and edited by Will Tim Moore. This podcast is strictly for informational purposes only and is not to be considered as investment advice or a solicitation to buy or sell any financial products, securities, digital assets, or any other investment vehicles or a basis to make any financial decisions. Wiser Wealth Management Incorporated is a registered investment advisor with the SEC. The host and or guest may personally own securities, digital assets, or other investment vehicles mentioned on this podcast. Neither the host nor guest of the show are compensated for their participation and no referral fees are paid to or received by any host or guest for clients, listeners, or similar interests. Investments involve risk, and unless otherwise stated, are not guaranteed. Be sure to first consult with a qualified financial advisor, tax professional, insurance professional, and or legal professional before implementing any strategy discussed herein. Past performance is not indicative of future performance.